Now, now, now you're here because you know John Cotton, amen, right? You're here because you know him. Uh, and, and as sad as it is, we want to thank God for him. And so I, I just know that this will help us begin to move in this grieving process. If we'll just put our hands together and just give God praise for John. Can we do that? Come on, can we, give, can we thank God for John? Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, give God glory. Come on, come on, come on, tell the Lord, thank you for allowing him to come into your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen, and we're not, we're not going to pretend like this doesn't hurt, but we are going to celebrate knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We're going to cry. We're going to shed some tears. But the Bible tells us not to cry as those who have no hope. We got hope, amen, that we'll see them again. We'll see them again. I learned a long time ago that leaving ain't bad when you got somewhere to go. Now, if you don't have anywhere to go, you've been evicted. But when you got somewhere to go, and, and even though John is not with us, John had a place to go. He's with his heavenly father now. And we're going to celebrate his life today. Amen. We're going to celebrate his life today. Uh, we're going to have scripture, Old Testament scripture read, followed by New Testament. Then after that, we'll have prayer. And then we'll ask this choir. Now, the significance in everything we do today, uh, when John was with us, John was really with us. He was a part of everything here. Just like he was a part of all your lives. John was a part of this choir. He sung in this choir. Amen. He was a part of the men's choir. He sung in the men's choir. He was a part of the audio video ministry. He was a part of our security ministry. He moved tables and chairs. He was in training to be a deacon here. Come on, how many of y'all know this just was an awesome man of God? Hallelujah. We're just so thankful that we had an opportunity to meet John Caleb Cotton and his family. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if our Old Testament scripture will come followed by New Testament scripture. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We did love John. We love John. John was a wonderful name. Wonderful name. My Old Testament scripture is coming from uh, Psalms 121, Old Testament scripture. This, 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 this scripture always gives me comfort. In time of stress and anguish and pain. Psalm 121, it says, I will lift mine eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. 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 To 
this family. No words. New Testament scripture reading will be coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 through 17 for your hearing. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which slept in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, <laughs> ah, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, dear God, we come this afternoon, this evening, dear God, as humbly as we know how. We know, Father God, that you're a God that never makes a mistake, dear God. You're able, dear God, to do all things. Your word says, dear God, that we'll cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. We know, Father God, that you love us, dear God. We know that you're strengthening us, dear God. We ask you, Father God, for a special blessing upon, dear God, this family, dear God. Sister Danielle, dear God, that you touch her in a special, special way, dear God. Give her strength, dear God, even through this trying time, Father God. Your word said you will not put too much on us that we cannot bear. But we know, God, that you're God that's able to do all things. So we know, dear God, that you're doing it right now in the name of Jesus. Dear God, you said, ask anything, Lord, in your name, dear God, and you will give us the desires of our hearts, dear God. We ask you, Lord, that you wrap your loving arms around their, his, their children, dear God, that you strengthen them, Father God. Give them understanding, dear God. Give them the mind, dear God, to know that you're with them every step of the way. You'll never leave us, nor will you forsake us, dear God. We know, Father God, that you're a wise God that you are a mighty God, you are a loving God, you are a peaceful God, you are a God that carries us, dear God, when we can't carry ourselves. So we know, dear God, that there's nothing too hard for you to do. So we rest in your arms, dear God. We rest in your arms, dear God, because we have no other arms to rest in. So we know, Father God, that you're with us every step of the way. You said, let not our hearts be troubled, dear God. And we know, Father God, that you're a God that's able to alleviate the pain that we're all feeling, dear God, but especially the family, dear God. We know, dear God, that you're a God that's able to move that mountain right up the way. And we know, Father God, it feels like a mountain right now, dear God, but we know that you're able to move it out of the way. Where there's peace, dear God, that will come. That where there's love will come. That there's joy will come, dear God, in the name of Jesus. So strengthen right now, dear God. Strengthen right now, dear God, because we know, dear God, our brother is with you. He's resting with you, dear God. He's resting in your arms, dear God. We know, dear God, because you said, dear God, you said, dear God, that we can ask anything, dear God. We know, dear God, he has lived the life, dear God, that he has a place, dear God, to rest with you, dear God. He's one of your flowers, dear God. He's one of your angels, dear God. So we know, Father God, that we are here, dear God, that we too have to answer that call, dear God. But we know, Father God, that your spirit is with us and you're with this family, dear God. That you lift them up, dear God, in those times when they feel like they can't go on, dear God. That you cover Sister Danielle, dear God. That you give her strength, dear God, to know, Father God, that you're with her every step of the way. That you never leave her, nor will you forsake her, dear God. So cover her right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless your holy name, dear God. You said no good thing will you withhold from us, dear God. So strengthen her, Father. Strengthen the children, dear God. Strengthen the mother, dear God, and the, and the family, dear God, as a whole, dear God, in the name of Jesus. All the loved ones, dear God, that are connected to this family, dear God, and New Jerusalem family, dear God. Because it is hard for us as well, dear God, that we've lost a soldier, dear God. We lost a man of God. We lost, dear God, we lost one that loves you, dear God, that ones that work in the vineyard, dear God. 
We know, dear God, that he's with you, dear God. He's still working, Father God. He's still working for the glory of you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we bless your holy name, dear God. We thank you, dear God. We praise your holy name because you are a God that's able to do all things. So we thank you, dear God. We thank you for the love that you've allowed us to experience through him, dear God. The love that he displayed to your people, dear God. The love that he displayed to his wife and to his children, Father God. That love continued to live on. In the name of Jesus, we claim victory. Because we do walk in victory. We walk in authority. We walk in favor. Because your word says that we can. So we cast all of our cares today, dear God, upon you. Because you love us. Because you care for us. And as you're loving us and as you're caring for us, dear God, shower that special blessing upon Sister Danielle, dear God, and the children, dear God, in a mighty way. We claim it already done. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the precious Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, it is done. Thank God and amen. Amen.
Come on, how many of y'all know the blood still works? Come on, how many of y'all know the blood still works? Come on, it will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The blood still works. Even in our darkest hour, the blood still works. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the sea, the blood still works. I know. I know. I know. I, 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 some, to some of you, some of you new here at New Jerusalem, and, and I, I know when you when you when you heard it was a memorial service. Or, you might have thought that it was going to be a time of sadness, but my God, I, I know, I know a man. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, Brother John Cotton, and Brother John Cotton didn't do sad. I wish I had some. I wish we could, we could really get along with this grieving thing if we. Act like we know him. We gonna miss him, but he didn't do sad. He like, he like, he like loving on God and God's people. And uh, we would do him a disservice to come and just be sad. Uh, we can cry tears of joy too. Amen. Uh, we're gonna spend uh, about sixty seconds, if you will, on program calls for a reading of the obituary silently. And, and so I'm going to ask the musicians, they'll play some music, some soft music, and we'll read the obituary. Uh, but then what we're going to do, uh, grief is a strange thing. It, it, uh, well, I'll let y'all read, and then I'll talk. Y'all read. As I was getting ready to say, grief is a is a strange thing. All of us that believe in God, believe in Jesus Christ, we understand and we believe that God made us. He created us in a, in His own image and in His own likeness. And that's what John believed. When God creates us, He created us with all of His emotions, and all of His feelings. We we share that with God. These psychologists would tell you that grief comes in stages. There, there are stages of grief. There's first the denial stage. And then there's a stage of anger. And there's a stage of bargaining. Then a stage of depression. And then a stage of acceptance. And the way grief works is... You can be in one stage and doing well and then all of a sudden fall back to another one. And what we must understand is it's sometimes never ending. Sometimes you'll grieve for the rest of your life. But it's a process. 
and the way that we help each other is we, we do like the word of God tells us to do. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. And that's what we are here to do today. We're here to encourage Danielle and the boys and the rest of the family and that family back in Connecticut. We're here to encourage them. Uh, not that we know everything about it, but we know a God. We know that God said he will uphold us. He said he will cover us. He'll keep us. And while we're strong and while the others are weak, we can encourage them. And so that's what this period is, this period of reflection, this period where we come and we, we give some reflections. And, uh, and I, I won't take my time. This is a memorial service and where we come and we, we remember uh, Brother John, and some of the things he's done in your life, ways he's touched you. And the family needs to hear it. Uh, the family needs to be encouraged. And so... Uh, we're going to step aside. I'm going to step aside for a few minutes. There's a podium here to my left uh, with a microphone on it. And there are those that want to come and just share some reflections, share some words of encouragement to this family, these children. Uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, you don't have to come in any order. Uh, I'm going to give, uh, give you two minutes apiece and, uh, so we're not here all night. And one of the things I always say is that we can give remarks and reflections on this day, but they're really going to need them tomorrow and the next day and the next day and next week and next month and next year. And so we can't, we're not going to be able to get all of it out tonight. Amen. Uh, but if there are those that want to just come and share some, offer some words of encouragement, uh, share some reflective moments about uh, Brother John, uh, please feel free to do so uh, over to my left. Uh, if you will, just come now. Even though I only knew Jonathan for five months, it felt like I'd known him longer. I looked forward to Jonathan coming to pick me up every Sunday in the van. He was so nice. He was so gentle and helpful, loading us in the van and helping us out of the van. He never complained. And I would sit in the front seat, and we talked all the way from my place, my home, to church. And when he talked to me, he every time he said something, he tapped me on the arm <laughs> when he would say something. So by the time I got to church, I had a bruise on my arm. <laughs> but it was okay. I loved him. I love him. He's crazy about his boys, and Amen. he was undecided about moving to Africa. We would talk about Africa. But the last thing I remember he told me last Sunday, when the weather got warmer, he was going to sit on the porch with Miss Geraldine Powell and drink tea. He was a gentle giant, is a gentle giant, and I believe that heaven needed him more than we need him here on earth. I love him. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say, yes, I told the band too. Um, the last conversation we had, he was talking about he had went home to Connecticut and how he wanted his boys to see and meet his family and, you know, learn about his side of the family and see his stuff. He was so proud of the boys. He was always showcasing how to help the ladies with the food in the room and so forth. But he was just a gentle giant, like she said. I miss you, John, and I love you. Good afternoon, good evening, I should say. Uh, I'm representing several ministries, the Mighty Men of God, the Men's Choir, the Mass Choir, and, and, and some others. So I'm begging you, Pastor Collins, the family and the congregation, to forgive me if I go beyond the two minutes. How do I speak about a fellow brother in Christ when I'm struggling to understand his sudden and shocking departure from within our midst? 
The consolation that I do have is that I'm resting on God's word. We are confident, yes, and well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 8. With God <coughs> is where Deacon John is residing right now. In a recent uh, Mighty Men of God meeting, John presented us with a challenge to tell who we are, not bloodlines or academic achievements or careers, mater material possessions, honors or accolades, but who we were spiritually, our development, growth, and characteristics. It's difficult to do an examination because we are only capable of looking at the external and not see or know the internal. However, with the discernment from God, I feel that my observations during the time that Brother John and I spent together has assured me that I could give an accurate description of his inner spirituality. Why? Because his external character reflected his internal Christianity. Scripture says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrew 11.1. 1. And though I cannot look internally, I believe that I can see John spiritually because of his vertical relationship with God that transferred to his horizontal relationship with God's people. And he, that's Abraham, believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Everything that I examined with uh, Deacon John exhibited a belief in God. I saw him as a righteous and obedient man and a diligent servant in the body of Christ. Could his belief in God and his obedience be confirmed in his service to God, his family, his church, and his neighbors? Yes. Here's a few examples of the ministries that are mourning for him right now. The mighty men of God, the diaconate ministry, the acts ministry, the mass choir, the men's choir, the van ministry, security ministry, the audio video ministry, teaching special needs children and coaching little league football. And there are probably some that I, I, I'm not aware of, but I'm sure that he was participating in those as well. James 2.18 says, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith with your works. And with John, we can say, I will show you my faith by my works. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. When speaking about his wife, Deacon John told me that his first encounter with her was love at first sight. He declared that she would be the woman that he would commit his life to and honor his spoken vows before God. She would be, to be his help me, and he was thankful to God for this special gift, Danielle. He loved his wife and, and desired that, that his home be with her and their children. It was a union joined together by God, and John sought to enjoy the enjoyment of it lasting for a lifetime. Philippians 2, 19, 24 says, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to, short, to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not things which are of Christ Jesus, but you know his proven character. I knew John's proven character, that as a son with his father, he served me in the gospel, served with me in the gospel. Yes, Brother John was like a son to me, 
He likened me to his dad on a regular basis. Same age, same life experiences, same life instructions, and the same admiration. I, too, loved him as a son. Paul spoke about Timothy's proven character that as a son, his father, he served with him in the gospel. As Paul and Timothy were on a mission, John and I were on a mission together, expanding the knowledge and understanding of God and his requirements for men in the body of Christ. When preparing for presentations, planning events, or solving the problems of the world, the church, or our homes, I could always trust his character. If I appeared too doubtful in any way, he would quickly respond with, listen, listen. And <clears throat> he would quickly respond with a listen. You're not listening. Whatever the need, I got you. Therefore, there will be grief and mourning because of his death. But I feel assured that John is saying, look, you can get through this. Listen, listen, pray and depend on the Lord. You can do it, and I got you. To God be the glory. So I'm here representing a small sector of the uh, family in Connecticut, uh, the Browning side of the family. Uh, KK was my nephew, my older nephew, but my nephew nonetheless. Uh, you know, growing up, we used to play around. He was never going to listen to me because he was older than me. So, uh, you know, it, it, it hurts, you know. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I think we all got touched by KK. Um, whether it was the infectious personality, the smile, the joy he brought to everybody, we all got touched. Um, and I don't, I'm not a man, I got a whole list of things. I, 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 you know, I, I guess I could have wrote something, but I'm just here to say that we will miss KK um, in that we love them. The, the family in Connecticut, we, we, we love them. We're going to miss them. Um, first, I want to offer my condolences to Danielle, the boys, and the family here in Georgia and back in Connecticut. Um, I worked with Mr. J, and the first time I ever spoke to Mr. J was over the phone. And Mr. J can talk. We were on the phone for over an hour <laughs> just talking about things that, you know, we had in common, what he had experienced, what I had experienced. But I'm not one to get up and speak in front of people. But while I was sitting there, I could hear him in my head going, just go up there. Just go up there. You got this. You can do this. Um, Gentle Giant is just an understatement of who he was. Um, Mr. J's timing was always perfect. Um, as I was going through a transition in my life, he hit me every single time I needed some type of encouragement, and he did not even know that. Um, every morning he would send me a scripture or he would send me a song, um, and I'm going to miss him. Um, I'm going to miss that gentle giant, uh, the boys. Um, I miss you as well, and Danielle, you got this. Uh, you got a huge supporting behind you, and you know that if there's anything that you need, oh my goodness, there's no one that you can't turn to. Um, so just want to say that i uh, going to miss him. Um, my condolences to his family and the friends, and um, be blessed. Condolences to Danielle and the boys and all her family in Connecticut. Uh, I worked together with John, with Mr. J, 
at Taylor Elementary. We were paraprofessionals together, and he became a big brother to me. We had morning duty together, and we would talk for like 20 minutes. He goes, are you listening? Are you listening? <laughs> I said, I'll look at him. His eyes would get big. And like Aleska said, he, a big giant is an understatement. Um, he would always text me a song. And he'll say, hey, sis, you OK? Just check, always checking in. And I thank God that I was able to cross paths with him. It wasn't a coincidence, because God is not a coincidence. And the fact that we're all here today to embrace him and not to mourn, because we're going to grieve, but I believe that God is in the midst. And I thank God for his life. And I, my joy is to know that he is in heaven and that we'll resurrect with him. And I pray that all of you be blessed in Jesus' name. I also worked with um, John at Taylor Elementary, who was right across the hall from me. Um, he just had such a special way of making everyone feel welcome. It was my first year in education, and he just really <laughs> welcomed me with open arms, and I didn't even know I needed it. And he was just such a special, special person. And like Nicolette said, I'm so, I feel so lucky to have ever met him, have had a conversation with him, anything, so I will definitely be missed. My condolences to Danielle, the boy, and his family in Connecticut. Um, I'm relatively uh, Maybe new brother here in New Jersey for two years. But I met John, and we immediately, like others have said, combined together. And John was always gentle, kind man. And I remember one night, I was here late, and he said, I was calling my wife to pick me up. He says, you don't have to call her, I can take you. So I said, no, I don't want to bother you. He said, no, it's no bother, I'll take you. I got this. So I said, okay. So we went, took to my house, where we parked outside of my house, and we talked for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and like he said, he had it. <laughs> I then s served in other ministries with John the men's Bible study. We were both deacons and trainers. Uh, him and Danielle, me and my wife, we were all together. And he was a great sports fan. He was just a man full of giving, giving, giving and loving. And it was he had an impression. When you say general giant, you see I'm not a giant. <laughs> so you can get the contrast. <laughs> but I always felt with him, my brother, and my love. And Danielle, you and the boys, whatever you need, or I can help, just don't hesitate to call. We all love you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I sat back there and I debated whether I was going to come up here and say anything or not. And um, like the sister said, I could hear John going, if you don't get up. <laughs> so um, I had the, the honor of being able to call him friend. Um, and when I started working in the youth department, calls me up. Hey, bro, uh, I know you need me. I do, I do. I'm coming back, I'm coming back to you, I got you, I got you. 
and that's who he was. He, he, he was always there. I was, I was laughing as I heard folks say, he would say, listen, listen, and he would touch me. And I wish he would just touch me. He touched me. John had to soon go, are you listening to me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to you. I got you. John was, he has an infectious spirit, and there was nothing better than to be able to share that love with him. Um, and we never finished a conversation without telling each other that we loved each other. I, I truly have to, I, I hate to say this to you, um, the first time John and I connected, was beginning of the service. We missed all of it. <laughs> we stood on that parking lot and we talked about everything from Connecticut to growing up in New Jersey to his father being in church and my father being. So I want to apologize on behalf of myself. <laughs> no problem. Danielle, and boy, y'all know I love you. You know I love you dearly. If you need me, call. I am I am right here. Good evening. My condolences to the family. Um, a lot of what I'm going to say has already been said before. I'm just going to just tell it from my perspective. I've been a member of New Jerusalem for about two years. And when I joined, I just sat and observed, you know, just trying to figure out which ministry I wanted to be a part of. And I was just observing, you know, John stood out. You know, he was a tall gentleman. And so I, you know, looked, I saw a witness. Security one Sunday, then I came back the next Sunday. He was in the choir. <laughs> then I came back the next Sunday. He was on, a, you know, ushering. And then I went to my car in between, so he was driving the van. <laughs> helping. So I'm, you know, and I was thinking to myself, I got out of character. You remember that scene from The Color Purple? You're like, Harper, who that man? I was like, who is this? This, You know, but uh, I mean, he was just a genuine person. Uh, think about our last conversation that we had. Uh, just one more thing. It was right after the Easter play, Easter rehearsal, and Pastor John was there. He was right over here helping move uh, chairs and things of that nature. And um, he had a conversation with me. You never, you know, you think back, you didn't know that was going to be your last conversation. And he was telling me, encouraging me to be more active with the media ministry, to go back there and help with the sound room. And uh, I was like, John, I can't. There's too many steps. And you know what John said? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. OK? If you need me to come in, I will come in. I will help you. And uh, at the time, I, you know, I didn't think much of it, but I think that was God speaking Amen. through him at the time, saying, you know, do more. Uh, and I'll just leave the family with this and pass it on. Um, my mother passed four years ago. My only child. My mother was all I had. Very active in the church. But I was this close to turning away from the church. A lot of hurt, a lot of anger, a lot of grief. But I never will forget I went to church that following Sunday. And, if, you know, out of all scriptures, like the Lord was speaking to me, the scripture was, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And I will leave you one other thing. I'm not a Betty man. I try to, you know, keep a little bit I have. But I bet everything that I own, retirement, everything, that when they open up the gates of heaven, God said, well done, my faithful servant. Well done. guy that John asked to be a part of the media minutes to turn the microphone off on you. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Um, in honor of God and recognition of Pastor and the grieving family, um, we bring you greetings from Taylor Elementary. I'm the principal at Taylor, and um, it is definitely a statement when you can 
hear the same testaments of one individual and each and every voice that's been spoken today. Um, Mr. Cotton was the same at school um, and every day um, we hear more and more lives that he impacted and touched um, on a daily basis um, through the staff, through the kiddos, through me, um, just through everybody and everything, we are going to miss him. Um, our first interaction was through his children, and <laughs> he would come in in the morning time, drop the boys off, and we would always say, okay, you're going to come and work here. And he'd say, no, 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 no. I just have to make sure this is the place for me. I got to make sure this is the place for me. And when I finally got a chance to interview him, it was the longest interview. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a chance to ask one question. <laughs> and the rest of the interview was him telling me everything that he had accomplished yeah, and everything yeah. that he had done um, in the lives of children. And uh, we are just blessed and fortunate that we had the opportunity um, to get that. Um, it was a short period of time, but it was an everlasting impact. So we will forever, forever love Mr. Cotton. And you guys know that you have gained a tremendous family. So thank you for everything. I am the um, administrative assistant at Taylor. Um, like Ms. Saint said, he came in there and in eight months impacted so many people. We thought we knew how many people he impacted, but every day it's someone else. Oh, he helped me through, he sent me an email when he saw me crying one day, and that's the one interaction I saw with him. But he would just do that. Didn't have to have a long conversation. He came to me on Monday with a student he needed some help with, and he comes to my office, and I have music, spa music playing in my office, just get myself together. Um, and he said, sis, you have this music going all the time, sis? I said, yeah, he's like, okay, I'm gonna come in here every day, I'm gonna get my wusa, and then I'm gonna go teach these kids. I said, well, you come in here tomorrow, and my music is always on. So, my music is always gonna be on for Mr. Cotton. Boys, you know you can come and visit me anytime. Danielle, I give you all the strength in the world. Um, praying for your, you and your strength, and safe travels to all of those who came down. Um, safe travels back to Connecticut. We're going to take these three, and then we're going to move on. Amen. Uh, give it all to God who's ahead of my life. Um, and it's crazy because it sounds like everybody has the same thing. Like, I'm sitting back there. I'm like, man, I'm not going to go up there. He's like, boy, go up there. You know, and, and long story short, I worked with Mr. Cotton and John. Um, that was my dude. I call him my fist bump buddy. Um, every day, every single day, every single day without fail, we always get a fist bump in the hallway. We always get a fist bump in the cafeteria, and that was just our thing. Like, we, we spoke every single day. And uh, one of the, two, the, two of the biggest things about him is he was such a people person. He was such a people person. Like, you didn't have to know him, but he'll start a full conversation with you. Like, y'all been boys forever. And um, at Taylor, I kind of feel like a big brother, but, like, he really felt like a father figure to so many people in ways that he didn't know. He always, always, always had a word of encouragement. He... Without it knowing, like, he'll just say something so simple, and it would just bless the rest of your day. And I think God really used to use him to help bless each and every one of us in some form or fashion. And um, most importantly, he loved these kids. He loved these kids. Like, literally, like, there will be days I'm frustrated. He's like, bro, it ain't that serious. They kids. You'll be all right. I'm like, you know, I will be all right. But, like, he genuinely had a love for these kids, boys. He genuinely had a love for you guys. And trust me when I say he is watching over you. He is there with you every step of the way. Just as us, like, this is your support system, and we are here for you. I promise. Peace and love. Good evening. Uh, I come on behalf of the drama ministry. And just like all the other hundreds of ministries he served on, he also shared his talents and his gifts with us in the drama ministry. In addition to Je Danielle, Danielle is also a part of us. Uh, so condolences, Danielle. 
You know, two years ago, I was sitting where you are, so I know definitely firsthand what you're going through. And I learned that God is definitely a healer also in grief. So he's got you. I'm here, too, if you need me. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Giving honor and glory to God. Um, my condolences to the family. Um, my name is Gregory Thompson, and I am the music teacher at Taylor Elementary. And um, I met John Cotton in, in August of last year, but it felt like I've known him for my whole life. He was an inspiration to me, and he was like a big brother to me. We would talk all the time. John loved to come into the music room a few minutes before class started, and sometimes I'd be playing the piano, he would just sit back and listen to me play the piano. Um, and he, we would talk about music, we'd talk about life, but uh, he, would, he would inspire me, he would give me such encouraging words. Um, but I believe that what I'm about to say is from John and not really from me. Um, so uh, a few weeks ago we did this musical um, called The Lion King and we, we had this play and it was beautiful, it's wonderful. And um, um, John was so excited about it um, because his son was in the play. And um, you know, the day after the play, John gave me this huge hug in the hallway and he said, thank you, thank you so much. You showed me a side of my son that I never knew that he had. Um, you showed me something. And I, I don't know if you guys have ever, I don't know if you know anything about The Lion King, but the, Lion, the entire story of The Lion King is about a son who loses his father. And um, oddly enough, the person who played that role of the son was John's son. Um, he played Simba in the musical. And uh, towards the end of the musical, there's this part where um, Simba is surrounded by the storytellers who say, you know, do you know who you are? And he says, I, I don't know who I am. And, and, and um, they say, I'll show you. You know, I know your father. And he says, my father is gone. And they said, you're wrong. Your father's still here. And in the play, Simba, played by John's son, was kneeling down and he was looking forward and he could not see his father. All he could do was hear his father. Ma, 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 ma. That's all he could do. And who would know that a few weeks later that that is exactly what these boys are about to experience. They won't be able to see their father, but yeah, they will be able to hear Amen. their father. Um, that is... Um, Somebody said earlier that there is no such thing as a coincidence. Um, and I'm telling you, when that story came to me, I said, well, if that's not God, then I just don't know. Amen. Um, so I just, my Amen. condolences. Um, um, but John is speaking to us right now. Amen. I can, I can just feel it. Amen. I can Amen. absolutely feel it. Amen. Amen. Um, I pray for you. Um, uh, I just... Bless your family. Bless everyone. Um, Amen. In the name of God. Amen. Thank you. See, they. I'm sorry. They, they know I said. Just uh, you already it said it's over. And but I did we're that on purpose because I know when I do that, people come. Come okay. on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Well, that makes us feel better. Um, so I'm Meg. This is Stephanie, and we are two of the very, very blessed individuals from Taylor Elementary that were blessed, obviously, with John Cotton. Uh, I was on volleyball with John. Yes, we have a faculty volleyball team. And he was soft hands, Johnny. <laughs> because there he is. Everyone says the gentle giant. And he's there, and we're on that volleyball court. And he'd go, oh. And it not only went over, but it went where no one else could return it. And we were like, I would always say, that's it, Johnny. Go, Johnny. Um, and that's just one side of John. Soft hands, Johnny. Um, but also, I, and I'll be quick, but I felt like every 
conversation, everybody has said this, but every minute of his life, he was so intentional and so committed to make every single thing that he said make a diff and did make a difference in the lives of others. And that is a power. That is a magic that John just had. And I know everyone said he had the gift of gab. I love a good gift of gab. Um, but he didn't, he didn't talk just to talk. He wanted to make sure that everybody felt special and reaffirmed and praised. And he didn't just like say, oh, nice dress or, you know, good job. It was very specific, very intentional. And he would always say, I'd say, oh, thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. And he'd go, no, I'm serious. I don't think you're listening. Um, listen, Meg, I want you to know this is true. And it's, you know, no matter what compliment he gave me, he was so intentional about it. And then if there were conversations that he had to have, not just with kids or just with adults, adults and kids alike, if it maybe wasn't a reaffirmation or a praise, it was something that was going to help you move forward better, right? Just to move forward better and live better and be better. And um, that is just something that we're all going to carry in our hearts forever. And Cameron and Carter and Kaylin and Danielle and the whole family everywhere, Connecticut, Georgia, everywhere, that legacy is going to live on in you and through you. Amen. Every day. Amen. So um, just briefly, I'm also from Taylor, and Carter is my student, and I just love him. Um, John always came and checked on Carter because mom, Danielle knows, sometimes Carter can be a little buster. Um, and we, and look, I, I've always told her I raised a little buster, so I know this, but I just love Carter and John always came and checked on him and he would always say, Miss Tierney, you tell me if I need to come and speak with him and he did and I would say, John, you're such a good dad. That's what I'll remember. But also, who knew? Y'all knew John could sing, but John sang at our holiday faculty meeting and just blew us out of the water. Um, and we were like, John Cotton, excuse me. <laughs> uh, I know, he was, and he was just, that's, you would never know that because he was so humble and just such a, just, you know, everyone's saying gentle, but just such a quiet force that when he spoke, it really meant something. So we will forever be grateful Amen. to know John. Amen. Come on, everybody, put your hands together and just give God praise for all of these words of encouragement. We pray they do just that. Listen, do me a favor. Don't let this be the only day that you offer words of encouragement. Pick up the phone and give Danielle a call. Maybe drop by, see the kids. And I know, that, I know there's so much that so many could say. Uh, we just don't have the time to do it all. I do want to do something real quick. I just want the family to see who all is here. Uh, Brother John was uh, such an integral part of so many different ministries around here, and I dare not try to call all of them because I think we got 40, and I think he was in 39 of them. <laughs> and so I'm going to, if, if, if you are serving in a ministry that John Cotton was in, if you'll just stand here at New Jerusalem, if you're serving in a ministry that John Cotton was in, if you'll just stand, I just want y'all to see all of the different men. These ministries represent a whole gamut of ministries here. And there's some coming in from the outside. Amen. The usher ministry, the choir ministry, men's ministry, the deacon ministry, band ministry. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to also, uh, I want to also share this with you because everybody can't, uh, can't stand and talk. I'm going to ask all of the teachers of Taylor, all those teachers that are here from Taylor, if you'll just stand. I just want to, we want to recognize all of the teachers from Taylor. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen, amen. 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 Also, I found out that John was coaching football, and there are some coaches that are here that coach along beside. I'm going to ask all the coaches that coach with John if you'll stand. All of the coaches that are here, all back in the back. Amen. Amen. That's just love. That's just love. And last but certainly not least, I know these 
I know these young youngins and they're not gonna they're not gonna come up and talk, but there are some people that played on the football field, some some football players that John that Coach John coached. I'm gonna ask all of the football players that Coach John coached if you'll just stand. All of the football players that are here. Amen. 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 God bless you. Come on, give everybody a great big round of applause. I'm gonna ask our choir to come back now and bless us with a song.
Amen. I, I do apologize. I thank God for testing. Amen. I thank God for people that make sure that uh, I say the right things and do the right things. Uh, and uh, I would be remiss. Um, Sister Danielle has uh, a great uh, group of supporters here also, those teachers that are here from Benefield. If you'll stand, uh, just let this, this mother, this wife see you. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, here in support. Amen. I, I dare not, not be uh, before us long. I, I want to share uh, what the Lord has shared with me. Uh, this has been uh, trying also to me. I, I preach about the goodness of God. Uh, I've been uh, preaching going on 30 years now, and uh, I know God to be good. But I also know that sometimes bad things happen. Uh, but it does not change the fact that God is good. Uh, and uh, when I got this news, it troubled me all the way to my core. Uh, and I just need to let you know that uh, pastors and preachers are human too. Amen. Uh, we, we have to, we have to uh, bite the fat and chew the cud, as they say in the country where I'm from. Uh, we have to deal with the ups and downs. And so I struggled with what to say. And as I, as I began to just stand before the Lord and seek him for what to comfort, what words of comfort to share, uh, he did show me uh, just a little something that I can share with you. Uh, before, but before that, I do want to, uh, I want to piggyback on what everybody else has, ha has said about Brother John. Uh, anytime you got into a conversation with him, uh, it's going to be a long conversation. And um, uh, he just came with a wealth of knowledge. And I always saw his love for not just uh, the church, and not just God, but I saw his love and care toward me. Uh, he would be up here working security. Uh, during our ma'am evening services, uh, we have a church that rents from us in the evening on Saturdays, and John would be here, and, and I would sneak in a lot with my toolbox uh, because I'm, I'm a little country, and I'm always working on something, and, and John would look at me, and he would shake his head. He said, you remind me of my daddy. You're always doing something, and um, I always, he and I used to kid and joke about that. Uh, he would give me a hard time about just taking it easy. Uh, but the Lord uh, said that as I stand today uh, to share this bit of testimony with you, uh, coming out of the book of John, uh, uh, coming out of the book of John, and, uh, the first chapter, in John chapter 1, beginning at verse 6, it reads, it says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Amen. Uh, I, I want to share with you today, you can take your seat, I want just briefly, as briefly as I can, I want to talk to you today about a a man named John. A man named John. Uh, it's been said, and if you've ever spent any time around John Cotton, uh, you will soon come to a realization that he loves the Lord. Uh, his father's a bishop in the state of Connecticut. He comes from a line of, a whole line of preachers and, and church goers and and he was just raised in the church. But more important than that, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior at an early age. All his life, all he's known is Jesus. And if you speak with him, if you talk with him long enough, and oftentimes that happens, you do talk with him a while, you'll find out that he loves the Lord. One thing that I like about John is John didn't quote a whole lot of scriptures. He lived the scriptures. He, he, he lived love. He lived patience. He lived kindness. And 
And when I, when I think about, when I ask the Lord, what shall I say to this family? What shall I say to me? God, how do I encourage myself? And the Lord sent me to this particular passage of scripture. And he said, that was a man named John. And he was sent from God. And some of you, you'll get that on the way home. Because the truth of the matter is, God just loaned him to us. But he was sent from God. His name is John, but he was sent from God. And, and his name means God is gracious. Which means that God loves us so much that he gave to us what we needed. And I don't know what he was. And everybody sitting in here, you can testify that John met a need somehow in your life. He, he spoke a kind word. He helped you move a table. He picked you up somewhere along the way. John Cotton helped to satisfy a need. But because God's name named in him and because of who he is, we understand that he was gracious. Now, when we read and we understand, we look at the background of this brother named John, the, the John the Baptist in the Bible, we find some interesting things. The Bible says that, that he was the cousin of Jesus. We find out that not only was he the cousin of Jesus, but he was also a forerunner of Jesus. And all that means is that he went before Christ, before his cousin Jesus came, who was destined to be the savior of the world. John the Baptist's whole purpose in life was to go before him and let people know that the savior was coming. And some of y'all churchgoers, you're going to get this on the way home. Yeah, John the Baptist's whole purpose was to let others know that Jesus, the Savior of the world, is on his way. And the Bible says in, the, in our text today that he was sent from God and his name was John. In other words, his name means God is gracious. And if I can today, for these few minutes, if I can share with you that when God is gracious, God gives us what we need. When God is gracious with us, God gives us not just what we need, he gives us, it gives us to it how we need it. Sometimes it's in a paraprofessional in the school. Sometimes it's by a coach, coaching football. Sometimes it's singing in a teacher's lounge. But whatever it is, God has a way of giving us because he's gracious what we need. And not only that, but we find out that John the Baptist was a witness and he bore, he bore witness of the light, which is Jesus Christ. Christ. And if you ever spent any time with John Cotton, you know that John Cotton bore witness of Jesus Christ. He did not miss a lot of words. What he said, he meant, and he said it for the betterment of those that come after him. When I look at John the Baptist, uh, I find three things about John the Baptist that I also see in John Cotton. And if you don't mind, I would like to share these with you today before I take my seat. The first thing that we see about John the Baptist uh, who was that, that John the Baptist was a humble servant. I will not have to preach that too hard. He, he was a humble and he was serving. He was humble and he was a servant. He was humble and he was serving. He wasn't proud or prideful and he was a servant. He did not have big head. He was not haughty and he was a servant. And, and I don't know if anybody know John cotton like I know John Cotton but he was a humble person uh, it's been said in here today that he was a gentle giant and I don't know another word that can stand in the place of humble and humility than the word gentle he was humble in the sense that he as big as he was he was not haughty he was not proud but he loved the Lord and oftentimes you could find him being a servant I should have got a better witness than that uh, there's somebody that's sitting on your road that he helped move the table that somebody who he helped talk to a child as somebody who he helped encourage he was humble but he also was a servant the first thing about John the Baptist uh, that resembles John Cotton is that he was a humble servant the next thing about John the Baptist that I also saw in John Cotton is that John Cotton and John the Baptist were bearers of the truth they told the truth not only did they tell the truth but they knew the truth they knew who was the truth they knew that Jesus was the truth and the life they knew the truth they shared the truth that was about the truth yeah he was a humble servant he also was a bearer of the truth all his life he he knew who Jesus was he he knew who the truth is and 
And I can say without any hesitation or reservation that for, for John to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I, I can say that John, if he had to be here today, if he could say it, he would say it like Paul, I fought a good fight and I finished my course. I'm now ready to be offered up. I, I, if John was here today, I could see him say, don't, don't cry for me. Just a few more rising and setting of the sun will all be together. John was a bearer of the truth. And he shared, he shared the truth in so many ways. He shared the truth in how he cared for his family. He shared the truth in how he cared for his friends. He shared the truth in how he fist bumped with his fist bumping buddies. He shared the truth in how he took care of the business that was at hand. He was humble and he was a servant. He served God's people. He served one another. He served those who he came in contact with. He served his family. But he also was a bearer of the truth. And the last thing that I want to point out about John the Baptist is that John the Baptist, uh, he, he understood that he was a witness to the light. Uh, that was the first thing that the Bible says it, but I, I want to say the best for last. John the Baptist told the truth about the light. And John the Baptist knew that he was a forerunner. He was, he was coming ahead of the light. And I want you to understand that when any time I spent any time with John Caleb Cotton, John Caleb Cotton let me know that he knew about Jesus. He knew who the light of the world was. And if he were here today, I believe he would tell me to tell you that you got to get to know who Jesus is. You got to know him in the free pardon of your sin. You, you got to come to know this Jesus because in the midst of the darkened world that we live in with trials and tribulation with sickness and hurt and pain, it's good to know that Jesus is the light of the world. He was a witness of the light. In other words, he talked about the goodness of God. And not only did he talk about it, I believe that he showed it in his own actions, that Jesus was the light. John the Baptist, John the Baptist said that I must decrease so that Christ may increase. And I don't know, uh, I, I love the story that the music teacher taught us. Uh, I believe God does intricately work things out. I, I believe God put things in place and perspective. And if we ever have an opportunity to, to, to connect the dots, we'll see that God is working things out even now. Even now, God is showing us his love and his joy and his peace and his long-suffering. Because I found out that whenever God gets ready to make a move, he put things in place in order to soften and show his compassion. God loves us dearly. And because he loves us dearly, he allowed things to move and maneuver in place so that when this thing happened on last week, it did not happen to the point to where it shook and rattled us off our foundation. Because we understand that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I, as I was standing with Danielle in the room, as they, as they had told us the bad news, I watched Danielle, this mother and this wife, bow her head and begin to pray because she was married to a God-fearing man. And even though it hurt her to say goodbye, she still knew that the blood still works. Even though it hurt her to say goodbye, she still knew that God is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And as I stand flat-footed here today, I think I need to let you know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It means that John is in a place where there's no more crying. He's in a place where there's no more dying. He's in a place where the streets are paved with gold. He's in a place where every day is Sunday. Every month, the month of May. Every year, the year of Jubilee. He's in a place where joy is everlasting. But more than that, he's in a place where he can watch over his boys. He can watch over his wife. He's in a place where 
where he can intercede for his family. Ain't God all right? Even in the midst of God moving his hand, God still cares about us. God still has compassion for us. And in the midst of him calling home his Savior, Saint, God has put some people around this family to keep them safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Come here, Bible. Come here, Jesus, and help me to close. That was another John in the Bible. He was not John the Baptist, but he was John the Beloved that stood at the feet of the cross. And I believe that if John Cotton was here today, he would say like Jesus, Son, behold thy mother. And he would say, Mother, behold thy son. Because just like Jesus cared about us enough to make sure that we were taken care of, Daniel, Caleb, I want y'all to know God has blessed us to where we will take care of you. We will watch over you. We will behold to see his face. Ain't God all right? Come here, Benefield. Benefield Elementary will help to watch over you. Taylor Elementary uh, will help to watch over you. Uh, the coaches and the teachers uh, will help to watch over you uh, because God uh, has always uh, never left us uh, nor forsaken us. Uh, yeah, it hurts. Uh, it hurt right now. Uh, but after a while uh, and by and by, uh, we will tell the Lord, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for receiving uh, a servant uh, like John, uh, a man named John. Uh, thank you uh, for saying servant. Uh, well done. Uh, you've been faithful uh, over a few things. Now come on up. He was faithful over his family. Listen. I, I know I know this hurts y'all. It hurts me. But the Lord always shows me something around this time when I was when I was a kid growing up I grew up in Rome Georgia and we grew up and, and and parents and teachers when we wanted to have fun we actually went outside the house we actually went outdoors to play yeah. and we would have so much fun and as we were leaving the, the house and going out to play our mothers would tell us you can have all the fun you want to out here. You can have all the fun you want to. But when the street lights come on. Oh, y'all had one of them moments. She said, bring your little behind in the house. And every time, every time I, I, I come and have to stand in a situation like this, I'm reminded of Hebrews 9 and 27. Where the writer writes, it is appointed. For man to die once. All of us in here, young and old, we have an appointment with death. We don't like it. We don't want to talk about it. But we all want to go to heaven, don't we? We don't want to die to get there. But all of us have an appointment with death. And I, I, we, we have these things. These devices, they're called smartphones. And I found out they're really as smart as the user. Some of y'all might not have one. You, and if you don't have a smart home, just, smartphone, just look straight ahead. Some of you got one that flip open. Don't worry, just look straight ahead. But if you got one of these, it comes with a calendar on it. And on this calendar, you can put your next assignment. Whatever your appointment is, you can put it on the calendar. If it's a doctor's visit, you put it on the calendar. If it's a meeting, you can put it on the calendar in this smartphone. And what it would do is when it approaches that date, it will alert you. And you can set your own alerts. 
You can say alert me a day before. You can say alert me two hours before, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You can put it on your calendar. And you can say alert me. But I want to submit to you. There's one appointment that we can never put on this calendar. It is appointed to man to die once. And then after that, the judgment. John, John had an appointment. I told you when I was a kid, we used to go out and play. We have fun. I mean, we're playing stuff. You ought to see how the kids are looking at me now. We play stuff. We play games like Duck, Duck, Goose. Red light, green light. Red Rover, Red Rover. Basketball, baseball. We did it all outside, and we, we would be having such a wonderful time. Mama said, when the street lights come on, you come in the house. Sometimes we would be having such a wonderful time playing that we wouldn't even notice that the street lights that came on. Just enjoying the company of family and friends, playing. And all of a sudden, somebody's mother or father would come to their front porch. I see some of y'all nodding your head. You already know. They come to the front porch and they yell your name out. The whole neighborhood hears your name. And I noticed that it never stopped the game. We continued to play. But whose ever name got called? They would toss the ball to the next player. And because their parents had taught them obedience, they would head on to the house. I want to submit to you. I told you, John is like John the Baptist. John Cotton was like John the Baptist. He was a forerunner for Jesus. And Jesus is coming back. But he loved the Lord. Daniel, Kaylin, Caleb, Carter, Cameron. That day your dad was enjoying life. But I want to submit to you that he loved God so much that when his heavenly father stepped to the porch of heaven and called his name, he left to go home. And I remember, I remember as people would leave, they would get to the top of the hill and they're turning their wave. And they'd say, I'll see you in the morning. I want you to know you'll see your brother, you'll see your, your father, you'll see your husband again. But we got to live this life that he was a forerunner for. We got to accept this Jesus Christ. Man, this, this family is so anointed, so blessed, such a wonderful family. I already know that John's spirit lives on. He lives on. You'll hear his voice. You'll be doing stuff and you'll remember that daddy said, or Caleb said, you'll remember, you remember that this is what he said. This is what he did. God has ordained. And he won't leave you. He won't leave you comforted. Let's, but he'll leave you comforted. We're here to help do that. Family, be encouraged. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But just like John, he'll say, you can make it. You got this. Listen. 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 You got this. And we're going to help you. God bless you. We love you. My God, we love you. Thank God for a man called name, a man named John who came by your way and blessed your life. So everyone that is here today, thank you for coming. And I pray that tomorrow and next week and the week after that, that you will celebrate this family. That you will, that you will be a part of just reaching out and encouraging them. Uh, put your arms around them. Uh, and we just thank God for a man named John. 
Can we do that? <laughs> yeah, we thank God for a man named John. Amen. Amen. Listen, two things, and then, and then we're going to go. Two things. Uh, over in the fellowship hall, we have, uh, we have some steak and potatoes. I'm joking. Don't, don't go over there looking for that. <laughs> but we do, we do have some light, uh, some light refreshments over there. I'm going to ask if New Jerusalem, if you will let our guests uh, eat first. Amen. Amen. So if you're New Jerusalem, I already know who you are because I asked you to stand earlier. Let, let our guests eat first and let this family eat first. I want you to love on this family. Amen. Second thing is this. Um, the official homegoing celebration will be on Monday at 11 o'clock at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church in, in uh, Connecticut. Uh, we're going to try to stream the service uh, back here off of our website, off the church's website. And so uh, you can uh, hopefully uh, dial in to that. If not, then uh, we'll try to get information about their stream. Um, also, in the by in the obituary, uh, there's a as a as a request to give toward a uh, toward a um, yeah that thing a charity. Thank you. Uh, uh, a what scholarship. scholarship? Thank you, thank you. Uh, that information has not been uploaded yet, and so hopefully we'll have it uploaded by Monday. Amen. And so if you all just 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 kind of hang with the family. Continue to worship, continue to celebrate, continue uh, to encourage this family. We'll have that information uh, that you can give to a scholarship. Thank you for helping me with that. Amen. Amen. If you will, uh, let us stand. If, if everyone, I'm sorry, if everyone would stand with the exception of the family. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask, ask, my, ask the preachers and the deacons, if you all would come forward, all preachers, all deacons, if you'll come forward. And just stand, just stand around this family for me. Amen. Brother John was in, he's a deacon back home, and uh, just his humility, he's humble, a humble servant. Uh, y'all, I want y'all to stand closer. Y'all, yeah. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Uh, uh, as, we were, as we were putting together our deacons, our diaconate ministry, John was, uh, John was selected to be a deacon here, and I found out he was a deacon back home. And I went to him. I said, you don't have to go through this training again. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, he said, he said I want to do it. And so I said, okay, just, just, just humble. Uh, he didn't have to do that, just humble. And so these are our diaconate and our leaders, our ministerial leaders in the church, uh, just surrounding this family as we pray. Uh, if you all will, just kind of reach your hand. Everyone, just reach your hand. Just stretch your hand this way, if you will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come. And Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to go through this process. God, we realize that we do not go through this process alone. But God, we go through it with you, with our hand in your hand. And you holding our hand, oh God. And God, we just thank you, Lord, for the love in this room. And Father, we pray that as we prepare to leave this place, that you'll watch over this family, Danielle, and the boys, God, that you'll keep them, that you allow your presence to be felt, oh God, that you'll give them strength when they need strength, that you encourage them, oh God, when there's a need for encouragement. Bless this mother and allow her, oh God, the strength needed, oh God, to provide the loving care for her sons, oh God. And we pray, Lord, for the sons that they will grow up in the nurture and the admonition that their father has already planted in them. God, we pray for traveling grace and mercy. God, we just pray and we pray our love. We pray, oh God, our support over each and every person under the sound of my voice. God, we thank you in advance for your care. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may the rest rule and abide with us hence now and forever. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please feel free to head to the fellowship hall or you can come and, and greet the family however you are led.